to celebrate, hallelujah, the life of our dear brother, Gerald Watkins. Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. and the honor and the praise. You know, they sang that song, You Are My Strength Like No Other. And Gerald walked that walk in the strength of the Lord, in the fullness of his grace, and in the power of his name. He allowed the Lord to lift him up. So many times when he was down, the Lord gave him strength to rise up again. And we thank God, hallelujah, for an example, hallelujah, of perseverance, of commitment, of love and grace. We thank God, hallelujah. Come on, give him the praise again. <laughs> hallelujah, we serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I do want to give honor to my pastor, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also to Pastor Muriel Carter from Horns Temple Lighthouse Deliverance Ministries. Hallelujah. To this wonderful family, the Watkins family, and to um, the Palmer family, to all those who are gathered here today to pay tribute to this wonderful man. We thank the Lord for the life that he lived and he persevered right on to the end. And we thank God, hallelujah, for how he's able to take us through these hard times. It's only in his strength that we're able to do it. Time and time again, he has blessed us and he's gonna do it right now. Children, brothers, sisters, he is going to do it. Just allow him to minister to you as we minister and celebrate Gerald today. Our program, you have it in front of you, I'm sure. The prayer of comfort will be by Pastor Muriel Carter from Horns Temple Lighthouse Deliverance Ministry. Then we will have the Old Testament reading from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8 by Karan Watkins. Then the New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 55 by Sahira Long. And after that, we'll have a selection from Sister Jasmine Murray. Um, we ask that you use the, anyone who's coming up, you can use the, the mic over there. At this time, Pastor Muriel Carter. Shall we stand if you can? Amen. This is another day that the Lord has made. In spite of, we come to rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, in Jesus' name, we stand in your presence as humbly as we know how. We will say of the Lord, he is our strength, our help, our fortress, and our refuge. A very present help in a time of need. And as we stand in your presence, God, we ask for we ask for comfort that can only come through your word. We ask that you will comfort the Watkins family, friends, even every enemy, every heart that was attached to Gerald. We ask that you would comfort them. We ask for strength, O oh God, in such a time as this. We ask that you would strengthen the hearts of the family. We ask that you would give them courage, courage to go through the journey that is ahead of them. We ask for courage, God, to endure, to, to take care of their families, to take care of their business, to be able to stand, oh God. We ask for the strength, for the promise in your word that said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we believe you, God, that before you take it back, the word said you would add more to it. We thank you, God, and we stand on the promise that comes from your word that says, thy right and thy staff. They comfort us. So whatever comfort looks like, whatever that need is to every family member, 
We ask that you will hover over and show yourself strong and mighty. Show up on their behalf, God, and strengthen them in such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning, all. First, give an honor to the Spirit of God to greet God in the universe. One that woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Be remiss to first acknowledge Him. The Bible says, Acknowledge Him in all thy ways, and He shall direct thy path. I want to do what I was asked to do and get right out your way. So I'll be coming from Ecclesiastics, the third chapter, verses 1. Three. To everything there is a season, and every time and every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, that's what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A keep, excuse me, a time to keep and a time to class away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time to please. May God bless you is my prayer. Y'all hear me? Yes. I'll be reading from the Amplified Classic Edition. It says, take notice. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed, transformed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable. Free, from immune, from, free and immune from decay, and we shall be changed, transformed. For this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature, and this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of dying, must put on immortality, freedom from death. And when this perishable part puts on the imperishable, and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death, then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, death is swallowed up, utterly vanquished forever, in and unto victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is, your where is your sting? May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord, everybody.
selection and also for the reading of the scripture at this time we're going to have reading of poem by brother Clayton Palmer and then the obituary reading by Crystal Watkins Praise the Lord. thank you good morning family good morning good morning everybody 
um, this poem is called Family. And I know Gerald was a poet. And when I was reading the obituary, I forgot. I f totally forgot he used to fix the uh, heaters. And, you know, I owe him one because he fixed the heater one time, and uh, I think the power went out. We had to cook on it. So it worked out for us. So this is called Before I Go. So before I go, remember that love sits at an open door like an old rocking chair with sturdy arms resting on a front porch, uncovered by climbing rose bushes and peonies with dew dripping off each blossom. I will be waiting for you in the wind, in the rain, and in the night when the moon is full and red covers his face while the wolf howls in vain. Before I go, let me bow down and pray for you. Pray for us until my knees go raw. If my tears fall, let them puddle on a naked floor. Let my tears be witness to my love for you. And my knees be witness to what I shall miss. For it is in the spirit of the wolf's howl, the serenity of the moon's face, and the gentle comfort of a rocking chair, which God gifts us a reminder of love and love for us. Before I go, know that my love for you will always be resting in the safest place. It will be resting in your heart and your souls. Thank you. Praise the Lord. At this time, the obituary. Gerald Watkins was born on December 4th, 1955 and passed away on Thursday, December 2nd, 2021. He was born in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey, to the late Shelley Watkins Sr. and Thelma M. Palmer Watkins. He was a lifetime resident of Cape May County. Gerald was employed by the Woodbine Developmental Center, where he retired after many years of service. He also was employed as a caddy for the Wildwood Golf and Country Club, a truck driver for City Supply, and a union worker for Local 77. In his spare time, Gerald enjoyed painting homes, repairing kerosene heaters, and repairing Kirby vacuums. Gerald considered himself Mr. Fix-It and was a jack of all trades. He was very handy. He also loved playing golf and would participate in the annual John Roberson Golf Tournament. He desired to teach and inspire young men and women to learn the golf game and develop the passion for the sport that he so thoroughly enjoyed. Gerald was a member of Christ Gospel Church Love Center. He enjoyed coming to church and would press his way as he could. He also was an active member of the Concerned Citizens of Whitesboro. Gerald liked to travel and drive around to visit his family. He also enjoyed writing poems and dedications to God and loved ones. Most important to him was the time he spent with his children, grandchildren, and enjoying all family activities. Gerald was one of a kind and will be tremendously missed. Gerald is survived by his children, Gary Red, Malika, Ma Malika Watkins, I'm sorry, and Felicia Watkins. His siblings, Shelley Watkins Jr., Ahmad Norden, George Watkins Sr., Gary Bernard Watkins Sr., Kalad Sapada, Vincent and Deborah Watkins, Harold and Sheila Watkins, Charlene Andrew Darby, Daryl Watkins, Brenda Watkins, Sharon Lynn, and Michael Watkins Sr. His grandchildren, I'm gonna get in trouble here, Ananda, 
as, okay, you see it, right? Amir, Naraya, Ayana, and, and Luis, and close loved ones, Ruby and Anthony. In addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by his granddaughter, Anaya, and his brothers, William Watkins and Ole Watkins, lovingly submitted by the family. Writings from Gerald Watkins, no more excuses, no more excuses. I've gone too long, days are getting shorter. God, I want to thank you for watching over me, caring for me, giving me enough grace to make it. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, oh dear God, I just want to be in control of my life. I want you to be in control of my life my walk, my thinking, my doing, my being, my tongue, my heart, and my spirit. Thank you, God, for what you mean to me and what you do for me. I love you, Lord. We have a po um, one card I'll read and then the condolence from Christ Gospel Church. May the love of God give you peace. May the caring of friends give you comfort. May the memories of the one you've lost remain in your heart and give you strength through the days ahead. That's submitted by the Missionary Choir of Christ Gospel Church. The Condolence. Christ Gospel Church Love Center Incorporated, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr., the Senior Pastor, and Evangelist Hannah F. Boone, the assistant pastor. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. To the family of Brother Gerald Watkins, we the pastor, ministers, officers, and members of the Christ Gospel Love Center of Whitesboro wish to express our deepest sympathy in the passing of Brother Gerald Watkins. We honor God for the life of Brother Gerald. We praise God for his blessing upon his life. Brother Gerald had a resilient spirit, amen, and did not allow anything to stop him. No matter what he was going through, Brother Gerald would still greet you with a smile on his face, followed by a conversation he wanted to share, amen. He loved his children, grandchildren, and all his family, and would do all he could for them. Brother Gerald was one of a kind and will truly be missed. Through this time of bereavement, we pray that God will comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. In the days and time to come, we will continue to uphold you in prayer, praying that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Sorrowfully submitted, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr., pastor of the Christ Gospel Church Love Center, Incorporated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel like we ought to give him a prayer. A standing ovation for Gerald. Well done, Gerald. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. At this time, we're going to have um, some remarks. First, from Christ Gospel Church, Elder Michael Gaines, and then Deacon Morris Fitzpatrick. 
And following those remarks, we will have a selection from Sister Angela Robinson, and then the, the, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor and Gerald's pastor, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr., in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, family. Um, on behalf of Christ Gospel Love Center, uh, ministers and members, um, me and Gerald go back, we go back a long ways, but I really want to go back to um, Christ Gospel. First started having golf tournaments because Gerald was an avid golfer and he loved to golf. So um, when we decided to start having these, these golf tournaments, um, Gerald was always with me, trying to show me how to conduct a golf tournament. He was very interested in um, having young people learn how to play golf, <laughs> and, and that, that was really his heart. But over the, over the course of the years, when we moved from the old church over to this one, um, I had prayed with Gerald many times. He came to the altar for prayer, and, and somehow we just seemed to end up with one another. I don't know if it was by choice or by chance, but um, often, you know, I would pray with him, and... He, he, would divulge, he would divulge some things. He was very open uh, about his, his, his love and his walk. Very open about how he wanted to relate, how he wanted to be better, be a better uh, man of God. And he would always, he would always come um, with a spirit of contrition. You know, he said, I, I just need you to help me. You know, I, I need the Lord to help me walk this walk a little better. And I really admired him because we, we all know of his health challenges, but it, he always pressed, that no, no matter what his health challenges was, as soon as he was able to get on his feet, he made his way to the church, and he would make his way to the altar so that he could commune with God. And it, I was very impressed with him about that, and I was encouraged. Uh, he would come for encouragement, but he would always encourage me, because when I looked at him and I saw his determination, you know, to be a better man of God all the time, no matter what he was going through. Some people would be, would be bitter, you know, thinking that, why do I have to go through this? The Lord hasn't really blessed me. But he never did that. He, he always felt blessed, and, and he always wanted to express that, and he always wanted to be better. You know, so you know, I, I, I've come, I loved him like a brother, you know, because of the things that he divulged. You know, he, he was very open, as I said before, and, you know, just his sincerity about his relationship with the Lord, you know, just, it encouraged me all the time. So when I saw him coming, I was encouraged. I would hope that he would come to me. He didn't always get me when he came to the altar, but, but when he did, it put a smile on my face. But I knew that we would encourage one another. <clears throat> so we have more, we have, on behalf of Christ Gospel Love Center and me, you know, I thank you for the time that I had with Gerald. God bless. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise him again. Praise him again. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I thank the Lord today for being in the number one more time. I praise him because he loved me from the beginning of time. I thank God for Bishop. I praise God for you all the time. I send messages. I hope you get them. <laughs> to my pastor, Pastor Mario Carter. And to the rest of the minister staff, Gerald Walken. I can't call him Gerald Walken. I call him Gerald Tagger Woods Walken. Because the man, the man, that was his first in the thing in the morning till in the afternoon. Pete, come on, let's go play golf. He loved golf. As I grew up here in Whitesboro, with the Watkins. I had a large family too. We all get together and we played golf. We didn't worry about you no know, getting in trouble like the day 
I see so much killing and, and things going on on the news. But when we came up here in Whitesburg, it was a different atmosphere. It was warm. You ate at my house. I ate at yours. Cause everybody liked to come to my house because my mom, she was a cook. And she laid it out, 29 biscuits on the pan. And she, she knew how to do it. And most everybody knew it. Let's go eat over Pete's house. Gerald and, and the, the rest of the family, Shelly and George and Billy and all of us, man, we lived together here in Whitesboro. There was no animosity, no nothing. We were family. Everybody here in Whitesboro was family. I can name, I can keep naming and naming and naming. But Gerald was one of a, one of a thousand. That loved, that loved golf. He tried to get his daughters in the golf, Malika and Fee. They don't know. They, they didn't know, and they still don't know now because I looked on TV 18 holes for, what was it, 90, 000, 9, $9 million? This is what we missed because I was in the number two. I was in the number two. I missed it. I missed my calling. My calling was playing golf. I could have been another tag of woods. I'm telling you the truth, y'all. Gerald could have been another tag of woods. We had, we had things to stop us. We had things to stop us. But nevertheless, Gerald was my man. He was my man. He, after he left the Love Center here on Sundays, he's, he come to Horns Temple. I'll be ushering at the door. His daughter and her mother. They doing praise and worship, and they get a little high in there sometimes. And you, 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 you know, you can't stand still. You want to move a little bit. So I move a little bit and stand there, close my eyes, and I'm singing. I'm, I'm right along with them. Nobody's coming in the door. When I open my eyes, Gerald's standing there. <laughs> he was standing. He wouldn't leave that door until he shook my hand. He was an inspiration, y'all. Gerald was a man of truth. And he was a family man. He, he, he talked about God. Him and I talked about God. And after that, he would talk about his family. He said, I love my family, Pete. That's all he dreamed about. Is just, I love my family. I love my family. He, he would come and take his granddaughters to uh, the dance studio. Every time I look, he was in Woodbine. He was in Woodbine more than me. <laughs> love B, y'all. Love B. I love the Watkins. I love all of y'all. Y'all stick together. That's what Gerald wanted. Stick together. Don't let nothing separate you. And please, for the love of God, love your God. Because he will never leave you, never forsake you. And that's, that's about all I have to say about my buddy. He was, he was a man of God. 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 Yes, he was a man of God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the source of our strength. He's the source of our lives. In him I live and I move and I have my very being, my existence. Can I get a witness this very day? He is. It is in him we live and move and have our very being existence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We honor God. Amen. This day. This is the day the Lord hath made. Amen. Can I get a witness? And we rejoice. We give him the praise and the glory. Amen. For what he has done in our lives. Certainly we honor the Lord. Amen. Who was first in my life and certainly too. Amen. Pastor Carter. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. And certainly Pastor Hatch. I see he's here also. Amen. Uh, the worship leader, Evangelist White, our ministers and all of God's people, and certainly to this family. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Now, uh, just for information's sake, uh, I know there were others who wanted to make remarks um, at the re repast. Um, later on this afternoon, certainly you get opportunity to share your reflections there. Is that all right? Amen. We, you know, we weren't trying to you know, we understand, you know, desire to certainly to uh, share about your, I think all of us have some general experiences. <laughs> Abe, I, know, I know I do. Amen. Some general experiences. Gerald was a very unique individual, very unique individual. Amen. He called me. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in the hospital. I passed him to the hospital and said, okay, I'll be home by Saturday, he says. And I said, Jerry, my car's in the front. I said, Jerry, you can't leave your car in the front, man. They're going to tow it. He said, oh, well, it'll be okay. I said, oh, okay. Gerald, move your car, but get somebody to move your car. Don't you move it. Gerald, Gerald was a tremendous uh, caring individual. Many, many people I was sure in regards to his abilities in terms of golf. He enjoyed golf. Amen. I may say Gerald probably really loved golf. That's probably the right word to say. He really, so he and I all times at the Whites River um, John Robeson uh, tournament, we would handle the putting greens. And so while no one was coming, Gerald would always challenge me, you know, putting, you know. Okay. And so uh, sometimes he win and sometimes I would win, but we would never tell nobody Amen. Because he didn't like to uh, what I call lose. Oh, oh no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. He didn't like doing that at all. But one of the things I appreciated about Gerald was the fact that even in the midst of his health challenges, and how he just kept on going. I, I mean, I, I've been with him. We go deliver dinners and you know doing uh, Thanksgiving time period. That Gerald get in the get in the trunk, amen, and take off his artificial drive, put it back on, and keep I said, man, that's a whole lot, but he didn't mind doing it. He didn't mind, and he didn't mind doing that because he had a concern and a care for others. It's a blessing to have a concern and a care for others. Now, was Gerald, Gerald wasn't perfect, but neither are you. Oh, no, I, I, I know that. If I, if I told you that Gerald was perfect, then you said, whatever else I said to that must be really no good. Amen. Amen. But as uh, Elder Mike shared, he like, Gerald had a way of like, give me, let me get myself together. And certainly he proved himself in that capacity. And did he love his children or what? His grandchildren. Man. Hey, see, I not seen Gerald in a couple of weeks. He come, to, uh, you know, Pastor. You know, we're raising some money for the uh, uh, the, gr the grand girls. They're going to uh, dance, so I got to hear some candy. You want to buy some candy, cookies? I said, no, Gerald, I don't want to buy no candy or cookies. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's a good it's a good cause, and he would he will push that. He will push it. He got his little paper and everything, and and sure enough, when they came in, Gerald gave me a call. It, it, it's here, and. and uh, it, 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 mean, it means a lot, amen. So he loved them, he loved them. And I, can, I believe that's important. He loved them more than he loved golf, by the way. You know that. He loved them more than he loved golf. But the point is being, amen, in the day and age we live in, it's imperative and important 
we just focused in our, our church last two months on focus on the family. Family is important. Family is important. <laughs> family is extremely important. And uh, I appreciate what he has done. Amen. We're praying for you, uh, to the daughters, to the son and grandchildren. We're praying the Lord would just strengthen you and guide you along this way. Amen. Because God is who he says he is. And he, and he changeth not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, I couldn't find golfing in the Bible. So, uh, we, you know, I, I, you know it, it would be a great thing for, yeah, there's a golf scripture for Gerald. There ain't no, there ain't no golfing in the Bible. Uh, but there is something in the Word. I believe that will minister and bless you, amen, for this short time period. Is it found in the book of 1 Corinthians? And it's the third chapter. And it begins at verse number 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation, another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with golf at all. Because the reality is, life is bigger than golf. You and I have come to church today and travel how to get here and you pass by many structures some com some commercial buildings some residential buildings some tall buildings uh, some establishments and these buildings had various windows and they had various uh, coverings some were vinyl siding some were cemented sidings uh, uh, brick sidings, they had various uh, makeups of the buildings. Some buildings were taller than others, some were wider than others, but every one of those buildings that you saw had a foundation. The foundation, strangely enough, a lot of the foundation, Pastor Carter, was under the ground. In other words, you could not see it in totality. Some of us have phenomenal uh, attire. Monty, those are some sharp shoes, bruh. Some absolutely dapper shoes. And sometimes we wear things so that people can observe what we have. A little bling bling every now and then. And it's noticeable. But who really notices a foundation? But the truth of the matter is, it is the power or the very stability of that building is not the windows, is not the doors, it is the foundation. Because when the storms of life come, and they'll come, when sorrows occur, and they do occur, occur when a storm comes, a nor'easter comes, and a hurricane comes, 
windows get blown out. Siding gets blown away. And yes, even sometimes the roof shingles are blown away. But if it has the right foundation, that building is going nowhere. You have to have the right foundation. And so, the foundation of Jesus Christ is essential for us to be able to do what we do in the time period that has been given unto us. Paul makes this statement, he says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, somebody shall say grace. Grace, unmerited favor, I didn't deserve it. Don't let anybody make you think that, yeah, yeah, you deserve it. Listen, you can be what you are, but in actuality, if it had not been for the grace of God, you would not even be able to be here this morning. God has shown himself faithful in not only your life, but in my life. In all of our lives, if God's been faithful in your life, somebody say amen. amen. He's given us grace. Individuals try to do fake foundations, but the Lord makes the same in the Gospel of Matthew. He simply says this, that he that heareth my words and doeth them. That's it. Hearing and doing, he says it's like a, he's like a person who builds his house upon a rock. A strong foundation. What are you building on? What are we building on? If you and I don't have that rock foundation, come on, Samus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock. I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. My heart has no desire to stay with doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell around this aspect. My aim, my goal, my purpose is the Lord plant my feet on the higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Sisters and brothers, it is now the time more than ever. You've seen what's happening all around our world. You've seen this situation and that situation and this goes on. But I'm so grateful this afternoon that I've got, I have the right foundation. I'm grateful for the foundation that the Lord has given unto us. I'm grateful to be born again of the water and of the spirit. I'm grateful, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for being thankful that the spirit of God dwelleth inside of me. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. He says, and, and he says, Foundations may alter, may differ, but the person who hears and does, that's the person who has the right foundation. What did you hear? What did you, you heard the Lord speak. Did you obey what he said? You heard the Lord speak. Did we do what he said do? We heard the Lord speak. Did we obey and follow what he said? He says, that's the wise person. That's the wise individual. And he proposes and says, the person who hears and doesn't do, he says, that individual, the Bible says he's a foolish individual. I didn't say that. The Bible says he's a foolish individual. Because God's word is so authentic. It's certifiable. It doesn't change. It remains the same. And so, Gerald, 
Gerald took a licking and kept on ticking. Watkins. Gerald refused to give in and give up. Gerald kept on going. And because of that, he has impacted our lives in different ways, in different ways. The impact hinges upon how long it will impact you. If it just impacts you just for a couple of minutes or a few hours or even for this service, then fade away. But if it's a lasting impact, then you're able to keep on going because you simply said, I appreciate you, Dad. I appreciate you, Pop Pop. I appreciate you, bruh, for what you did in my life and how you helped me. And the reason he's able to help individuals is because of the love of God that was inside of him. I made him care for others. Yes, it's a foundation. It's a foundation. It's a right foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. As you bow your heads, Lord, because you know it all, and nothing is hidden from you. Nothing. We times, at times, Lord, think that we know so much about so much of stuff. But I'm grateful. You know us. You know what's happening now, what's even going to happen tomorrow. Lord, let us have ears to hear. I open our ears to truth. I thank you and glorify you for being our God. For there is none like it unto you. Thank you for Gerald, this family, these families, these friends who have come this afternoon. I thank you for showing yourself to be faithful just when it seemed like we weren't able to go forth, you strengthened. You lifted the burden. You lifted the load. And you allowed us to make it, yes, Lord, another day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Because your word is true, Lord, I thank you in advance already for comforting this family. I thank you for the strength you're going to be giving unto them continuously. Not just today, not just this week, but on a continuous basis. I pray, Lord, the love that you've given unto them and the comfort you've given them will be given from them to others as well as we comfort one another at these times. I pray, Lord, that you would increase, lead, and guide that we will not only give our lives to you, but we will surrender all so that you will be exalted and that you will be praised and that you will be magnified. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. We do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. There will be a repast that will be occurring at the Lighthouse Church in Burley, right off Route 9. Make a left out of here. Approximately a mile and a half on your right hand side is the Lighthouse Church. Amen. The family certainly invite you to be there for the repast. I want to thank you. 
Sis, thank you, family. Thank you for being, sharing your father, sharing your brother, sharing your uncle, sharing your cousin. Thank you for sharing him with us. And I pray as you look at the pictures and as you listen to the various comments that will occur even later on, that you realize the value and the worth that certainly Gerald, amen, not only had, but certainly continues to have in our lives, in your lives. In Jesus' precious name. As the pianist plays very softly,